Hello, and welcome to iDig Discovery. My name is Dr. Scott Hocknell, and I'm the Senior Curator of Geosciences and a vertebrate paleontologist here at the Queensland Museum. But you can call me Dr. Scott. And what does that title even mean? Well, it means that I'm a scientist who studies fossils of ancient prehistoric creatures. It's actually something that I was doing since I was 12 years old. My science requires me to go out into the field, discover unique and rare fossils, and then apply scientific techniques to identify the prehistoric animals that we found. Imagine using science to figure out what life was like long ago, to determine what an extinct animal even looked like, when it lived, and where it lived. We can learn all of this information from the fossilized bones by following our curiosity and using the scientific inquiry process. Like every scientist, Dr. Scott uses a set of skills to help him answer his big questions. Dr. Scott plans and conducts excavations. He makes predictions and asks questions about the fossils he has found. He conducts further scientific investigations back in the lab to analyse and evaluate his findings and then communicate his findings to the world. One great discovery made over 10 years ago prompted us to ask lots of different questions about Australia's last giants, the megafauna. These animals lived in Australia between 2.6 million years ago and right up to 40,000 years ago, well after the time of the dinosaurs. The discovery occurred in 2008. First Nations people, the Baradabana, were conducting a cultural heritage survey for BHP at Southwark Creek Mine, which is west of Mackay. During the survey, the team discovered fossilised bones eroding from the creek bank. They were really curious to know whether the bones were actually fossils and if so, what creatures might they be from. So they got in contact with us at the Queensland Museum and when I saw the fossilised bones, I knew straight away that these were the bones of megafauna, giant creatures that once roamed Australia. But I was left with many unanswered questions. Questions like, what species of megafauna were these bones from? How old were the fossils? Why were there fossils at South Walker Creek in the first place? And how different did it look back then? Dr. Scott and his team used several tools to conduct their investigations and learn more about the fossils from South Walker Creek. They removed the mud and rock from the fossils using small drills, probes and brushes. They then used glues to stabilise and conserve the fossils. Finally, the fossils were labelled, boxed and placed carefully in storage. Over many, many years of painstaking excavation and study, we found thousands of fossils at South Walker Creek. Each fossil provided us with a clue, some little bit of evidence from the past. At the end of this long process, I worked with my team to create 3D scans of each fossil. I can then use these 3D scans to compare the fossils against fossils from all over the world. It helped me identify what sort of animals these fossils came from. We even took samples from around the bones and the bones themselves to figure out how old these fossils were. And we even found fossilised leaves, seeds and little tiny insects that told us what the environment was like. All of this information helped me determine what megafauna lived at South Walker Creek and how long ago. And get this, we found fossils of 16 species of megafauna. There were six mega predators. The world's tallest, most biggest kangaroo, a 300 kilo wombat, and the world's largest marsupial, diprotodon. And all of these animals lived at South Walker Creek 40,000 years ago. And those tiny little fossils, what did they tell us? That the environment was like a billabong today, just without the giants. At the end of this inquiry process, we wrote and published a scientific paper. This paper contains the findings of our research. But before we can publish, other scientists not involved in the research need to review our work and ask questions about how we came to our conclusions. Sometimes, some scientists don't agree with our conclusions or observations, so we may need to reconsider all of the evidence again and make edits to our scientific conclusions. It's a really exciting moment when our research is ready to be published and we can tell the world of our amazing discoveries. We also share our findings with the public. 
We give interviews on TV and radio, deliver presentations at festivals such as Unearthed, and include our findings in Queensland Museum Network exhibitions such as Lost Creatures. Now it's time for you to be a scientist too. I started when I was 12 years old by following the inquiry process. There is so much yet to be discovered and so many new questions you can ask and answer. You have an important part to play in the world of science and the ability to contribute to scientific understanding. We're inviting you to do this in the iDig Discovery Challenge. In the iDig Discovery Challenge, you will work as a scientist to develop, conduct and present your own scientific inquiry. What are you curious about? What will you investigate? How will you share your discoveries? Here are some ideas for you. You could explore something in your local area. You could explore various objects in a Queensland Museum loans kit. You could go online and investigate digital 3D fossils in our collection. Or you could work through an inquiry with your teacher. Visit the Project DIG website to enrol in the iDIG Discovery Challenge. Here, you can also access resources and activities to support your investigations. Register for digital engagement sessions with Dr. Scott and learn about opportunities to share and celebrate your discoveries. We can't wait to learn about your findings and discoveries in the iDIG Discovery Challenge. Good, Good luck. luck.